Hi, I'm Art Kaplan. I am the head of the Division of Medical Ethics at the NYU School of Medicine. Some of you may remember at the State of the Union address, while President Trump discussed many ideas he had, including the possibility of eliminating HIV and driving down drug prices, one of the things he said he was especially proud of was the federal right to try law that he, Vice President Pence, and other people in Congress helped to enact. That law has been on the books roughly for a year, and the president made a point of noting that Matt Bellino, one of the uh, uh, people uh, who was there at the signing ceremony uh, at the White House when the law was passed, had received a drug for his ALS, and that the right to try law was a major step forward, something he was very proud of, and one of the big health achievements of his administration. Well, I'm sorry to say, I don't think that right to try law is something to be proud of. I don't think it is working. And I think in many ways, it shows more of an ideological commitment on the part of the president than it does a practical commitment to getting people access to drugs not yet approved by the FDA. The right to try law in a nutshell says, if you want to try a, a drug that hasn't yet passed muster with the FDA, is still in early phases of testing, then you should be able to do that without getting the FDA's approval, without getting the approval of an institutional review board or research ethics committee. You should just be able to get whatever it is that you need. Well, that sounds great, but what the law didn't do is create any duty or obligation to give anyone drugs or, for that matter, devices or experimental vaccines. So you can ask, or as I sometimes think, you can beg a sponsor, usually a company, to give you a drug that hasn't yet been approved for sale or prescription by the FDA, but most companies won't do it. Indeed, in the case of Matt, the gentleman who has received uh, ALS drug from a company called Brainstorm, Brainstorm has said he can't afford to give anybody any uh, drug anymore. Just this one individual has been helped. And indeed, over the past year, there are two cases, one of which arguably isn't really a right to try case, where somebody has gotten access. Well, the president promised tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people would be getting access to unapproved drugs. So far, one person has. It's just a law that fails. It needs to be fixed, it needs to be changed, and it needs to take into account the realities of getting unapproved drugs. The reality is, if you don't budget any money, then small companies like Brainstorm can't afford to give anybody anything. They're not going to be able to give away their drugs for very long. They're just too small. Other companies are going to say, we're not going to do something without the FDA. We don't trust that we can get our drug approved if we don't talk to the FDA at all points in time. And there's no reason to get the FDA out of the way since its expanded access program, which has been on the books for many, many years, has given access to thousands and thousands of patients to unapproved drugs. Often the FDA has proprietary information about dosing, about uh, the frequency of administration of drugs that a company that wanted to give something away wouldn't be aware of. So it can actually be a help, not a hindrance. Right to try basically sounds good. It beats up on agencies like the FDA, on regulators and says they're in the way, get them out of the way. People will have access to drugs much more quickly. The reality after a year of the federal law and a couple years of state laws is nobody's getting access and until you find ways to reassure companies and pay companies for giving away their products, they're not likely to want to act even when asked. I'm Art Kaplan at the Division of Medical Ethics at NYU. Thanks for watching.